We're going to talk to him here in a minute, but uh, oh, he's in here already. He's ready to go. What a pro. He's got his shades on. Oh, yeah. The beard's trimmed nice. Look at him. Groomed. Look at him. He needs the Stevie well Wonder groomed. piano underneath him. He needs the Stevie Wonder piano if you have that in the truck. Oh, he put him back up. You so, look good, man. I can see your eyes. If you don't know who this guy is, you might be able to tell by his Thailand shirt. Uh, he's the guy from Bare Knuckle Thailand. Oh, yeah. Yeah, man. John oh, Nutt in the house. Yeah, thank you Here, very put much this mic me. a little closer to you. They want to hear your sweet, melodic voice. Exactly. <laughs> there he goes. I can go. So wow, you sound deep. like Barry, man. Can Barry you sing Barry White, White a little bit? Who can't? Am I right? <laughs> Let me hear you. <laughs> I've had so, uh, sexual. <laughs> no, okay, stop. We can get all Stop. Day. You're yeah. going to get me all excited. Oh. Okay. So, um, before we get to this uh, conversation that we're going to have really oh, yeah. quick, I just want to remind the fans watching, if you can't watch this whole thing, if you're not watching, catch the BKF show on Spotify uh, for BKFC show, and you'll be able to hear everything and listen to your car or whatever, because we don't want you driving and crashing. Anyway, John Nutt. Yes. John Nutt, great Thank to have you here all the way from Thailand. I didn't know you yeah. were going to be here today. I know, man. That's Very the fun unexpected. of this show. It's it, the fun. Spontaneity. Yeah, today was it's flashy. There was no format today. Today I sat down and they're like, Dave's on with him. I'm like, great, a lot to talk about. It's been weeks. Then they said, John, they told me in my ear, John Nutt's here. I'm like, yeah. oh, John Nutt, speaking of polarizing, you're a polarizing dude. I, apparently. Yeah, I, 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 you know. I'm a freak show. Man. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a walking circus carnival act, so it all works out. Well, it makes sense. You do the fight circus too, yep. and, and yep. you know, that looks intriguing intriguing to me i haven't seen one of those events yet but i did see the first ever bare knuckle in thailand that BKK. we did yeah man bare knuckle kingdom baby. first of all bare knuckle kingdom was beautiful the scenery was beautiful thailand is beautiful um you know coming out of that event uh, there was a lot of talk about it so i, I just want to know because we haven't had a chance to talk to you what did you feel about your first event uh, i mean it crushed it out of the park yeah. i mean come on now you, you you don't know what's going on with events coordination and you don't know what you're doing when you're doing your first bare knuckle show in a kingdom like thailand where Muay Thai just is so the main sport. It's the national sport of Thailand. So a lot of those guys, they had seen it. They had known what it was, but they didn't know what the the audience there, the live audience was going to think of it. And then obviously the word got around how, how exciting it was. Uh, and remember that we were running it for the U.S. time zone, right? Oh, yeah, I didn't even think we of that. We were running for the U.S. time zone. So we were doing the show over there at 9 a.m., so a lot of the fighters, obviously, that we have, they train their 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 Muay Thai or whatever combat sport they're into. Generally, they kick off at like the camps at like seven to nine a.m. and then another four to four to six, four to seven training in the afternoon. So it it, it was the opposite of what they normally do, but they loved it. They loved being up in the morning and and you know getting their coffee, getting their breakfast, and then going straight into slugging each other in the face, right? <laughs> so. It worked out perfectly. I mean, uh, from an events coordination standpoint, yeah. I loved doing the show in the morning. Well, let me ask you. I, I mean, again, never been to Thailand, but the one thing I really noticed on that show was uh, the perspiration, the sweat. It had, oh, How hot was it during nine that Nine million degrees. Nine million It was degrees. like standing on the sun. It, I mean, what was it? It was actually, it was about 85 degrees when we started. It was about 93 when we finished. Wow. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, wearing the suit that I was wearing uh, oh, yeah, I might changed about colors. <laughs> you I forgot about that. Yeah. I was going to say that actually, because yeah. when the event started, you had a completely dry suit, and then by the end of it, it was completely soaking wet all the way down to your knees. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Kudos. It was a hyper color suit, if you remember hyper color oh, yeah. back in the day. But I mean, you were there, and you have this this personality, this larger than life personality, which, uh, quite frankly, I mean, I, I I like you. It's on screen now, but it, it's mm. for some people. Other people were like, this guy's insane. And yes. I, I would think with your personality, you kind of like that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I don't mind it. I don't care either what people think about me. I'm, I'm, I'm like up Dave. the Dave Feldman yeah. route. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, people if they talk trash, normally the trash gets traction. So like, <laughs> right. I don't really care if they if they talk. I mean, the majority of the people that do talk smack. The internet's not a nice place. <laughs> I don't know if you've been to the internet before, but over in the internet land, they wow. kind of hate people. So. That's a great Chris Farley. That's Thank what you sound like right there. Yeah. Yeah, that's great, man. Say, I'll, say fact, you live in I'll a van. fat guy in a little coat for you. Say you live in a van down by the river. I live in a van down by the river. <laughs> yeah, so, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So <laughs> you're taking me off here. Yeah. That was great. <laughs> uh, next time I have you on, put some pillows in his Chris Farley. Of course. Farley. So I, I just wonder, where do you see Bare Knuckle Kingdom heading? I mean, where's it going? I think it's the future. I, mean, I, I think it's the future. I think I think the Feldmans, I think the whole team, I think BKFC, the the gods of war, Ares, I think that they all step in and they see it going the way that a lot, a lot of us see it. I mean, I do think it's the future. I think it's going to take over the world because not only, not only in Asia do you have such a combat sports fan fanatic love and passion for the blood, 
that bare knuckle delivers. Oh yeah. Oh right? yeah. I mean, oh yeah. That it delivers. The casual fans, it delivers everything that they want. You watch once, you're hooked. You, exactly. It's a and it's a blue collar thing, and we're a blue collar society over there. So I mean, you know, the gap here in America is is you got your middle class who we're going out for. But over there, there's not really much of a middle class. It's kind of all lower, and then you got a little bit of the upper. And nobody's nobody nobody's an equestrian over there. Equestrian. Horse, horse riding is not the biggest. <laughs> Polo's not getting the most love over in Thailand. Let well, me let tell me, you let that. Let me ask you. I, I had a buddy that was over there, and he told me what he recognized is that when he was traveling around Thailand looking at it, there's Muay Thai rings like on the side of the road. Everywhere. They're everywhere. I mean, it's everywhere. huge. So so I would guess the athletes have to be excited. This, Like you were saying, this is another avenue for them to Correct. make money to maybe get over to fight in America. Correct. And, I think in, in the States, you know, if, if you saw the UFC and the guys that want real fighting... Yeah. You know what I mean? They had one outlet to go transfer to before, and that was Vince. That was Vince McMahon giving you the WWE. So you had the Rondas of the world and the Brock Lesnar's of the world yeah. 10 years ago going into in, into that. Of course. And now you're seeing a lot of the UFC guys, oh, my face is changing in a different direction, and I want to see what this is all about. And oh, wait a second. I don't have to take the brain trauma that I, that I would if I put on 12-ounce gloves and took 300 shots in the head in a WBC matchup? See, that's important to say, too, and we, we've talked about that before, but if you're just tuning in, I mean, boxing, you got, what, 12 rounds, you got a brick of tape underneath, yeah. and they're not pillows. I mean, you're, you're repeatedly, bare knuckle, you're picking your you're shots. You're shaking the brain. It's actually safer. And, yes. and see, if you look at it on the surface, people don't think it is, but it's safer. So, I mean, a, as a professional, you have to even feel better promoting the sport as well over there. Uh, for me, as an events coordinator, too, as a producer of the shows and the director of the shows, man, this, this is, it's the dream. You know what I mean? We had, a, we had 11 fights on that BKK card. And I was just saying to Jimmy outside that we had 11 fights on the card. And when I got done with the show, I went over to the line producer. I was like, so who's in the hospital? 11 fights, 11 fighters went to the hospital. And I was like, oh my God, this is going to be a crusher. 127 stitches, one broken finger. See, that's, and, and you've talked to the fighters, at least I do, and I know you do too. And repeatedly they'll say to me, they know going into a fight, they're fighters, they're coming out with stitches. That does like a normal pro, I don't want stitches. Most but of it doesn't, love it. Yeah, it doesn't bother them. It's a badge of honor. I know one of our yes. guys, I think Tyler Goodjohn actually got where he got stitches. He got a tattooed like a little scissors on his head or something. Yes. Like they, It's a badge of honor. And it, it's not, you're not breaking arms, you're not breaking legs. And it, it's just no, a couple safer. broken noses. We didn't have any, we didn't have any orbital issues at all. Wow. And, and I, that was the one that I was going to be looking for. You know what I mean? No orbital issues at all. Uh, again, like you said, the wrist... A little bit of wrist damage, oh, a little bit of, bit of knuckle damage. But you know that going in. Of course. Now, now, And if you really are a fighter at heart, which is what we're going to be trying to, to gather, I want real deal Holyfield fighters as well, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. I want guys that want to knuckle up. So if we have those guys that are in there that don't mind the lacerations, that don't mind the blood, that I mean, you can see from the Thai guys that we had on that card, mm. the Thais, the Cambodians, the Burmese, these are people that like don't don't even get themselves wound up. They don't even get pumped up they until they until they see blood trickle. So, yeah. so of that card, uh, was there anybody on there who stood out the most for you on that card as an event coordinator? I, I mean, okay. <laughs> so I'm a weirdo because I well, do we, like losers. <laughs> you know what I mean? So do I, man. Because so like you can lose up. You can lose up. You know what I mean? And if, if you got somebody that loses up, TJ, there's a there's a guy that lost up. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's just a beautiful human being. And the women that were at the show, the women were shrieking for that guy. Now, Fabiano, obviously he should get taken. He's a, he's a, a stud, right? But you can lose up. And TJ lost up in that, in that fact. But again, on a big boy note, because I am a big boy, Steve Panda Banks okay. is a scary, scary human being. He, he's unafraid to fight anybody. Uh, I mean, he is a WBC Muay Thai champion. But that dude's hands, his fingers are like penises. They're just big, <laughs> big penis fingers. There's John Nutt. He's here. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, so, so John, John, John. Not like socials. Before, yeah. <laughs> before, before you go, uh, you go too far off here. Uh, I mean, I know your organization, a lot of respect to it. But I mean, do you see this like toe the line? I have a lot of respect for that yes. as well. It's all going to be on the app. But you see this as a breeding ground. That's what I see it for, yes. to get guys over to BKFC and, and bring them here. I have never had the goal of trying to be a top organization. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of people in this industry, in, in combat sports industry, that are just trying to have a measuring contest, just a big pissing contest. Yes, yeah, I see it all the time. And I am not a part of that at all. Uh, I love events coordinating. That is what I do. That like, if I'm not doing again, if I'm not events coordinating for fights, I'm I'm doing comedy. 
I, I do a lot of, you know, I did Tom Green's show. I did uh, Doug Stanhope's show. My bum is on the mic. Yeah. My bum is on the love Swedish. Exactly. Yeah, I just love Tom Green. <laughs> so, and I mean, before the pandemic, I was working a lot for, fight, uh, for Fox Sports Asia. So I was doing like travel shows for them. I was doing a lot of coverage of, of you know, the McGregors of the world of and, and, and that type of thing. Um, I never really want, even now, like I don't want to be at the top. I'm an, I'm an NCAA guy. Yeah, yeah. Even when it comes to football, like I don't watch the NFL. As am I. I, don't I watch NCAA, right? I, March, hungry, Mad, March Madness is the best best time of the uh, of the the year for me. So I mean, I like the lower levels. I think that that's where the grimy grit of the sport is, yeah. and I think that that's where the guys who really do want to test their full metal, if you will, I agree. Uh, that's when you when you can find them and. Those are who I like. Those are my people. It's a different proving ground. Uh, you're coming to prove yourself to get to that next level. Correct. Not that you're fighting harder, but it's all you know, and you you have that grit, like you're saying. And I agree with that. Now, and from the events coordination, that's what I, was I don't. Have, I don't have to deal with any of the prima donnas. No, like I don't have to Not deal yet. with any they of the diva. Get there. Yeah, it's true. Because you can get some people in this industry that like think that they, you know, just because they've got a taste for money or just because they got a taste for the prize fighting, they think they're at the top of the level, and it's like, man, then you got to deal with that. Yeah. What kind, of, what kind of ranch you own? <laughs> you know what I mean, what kind of yachts you on? What's what's your being an event coordinator? You say, and you know, Bare Knuckle Kingdom, of course, available on bkfc.com. If you, by the way, yes. missed the first one, you can go back and check it out. But do you have a date set for the next one? Any idea yet? I want a Halloweenish show. Okay. okay. I mean, again, uh, Thailand's ravaged right now. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you next about. Absolutely ravaged. That. We're we're crushed. The whole, I mean, the malls are shut down. Uh, when the malls are shut down, it's bad. Yeah, when Seven Eleven has a uh, curfew. You know it's bad. So uh, Thailand emplaced the sandbox. Big shout out to everybody in Phuket, the Pearl of the Andaman, because the sandbox, but basically what they've done is they're trying to make that COVID bubble. So they've shut off the bridge because okay. it is an island. Okay. You're not allowed to get in by car or boat. You're only allowed to fly in. If you're vaccinated, you're allowed to do no quarantine. So you're allowed to go to the island and okay. just ecotourism up the wazoo, if you will. Right now, it's probably one of the best times to go because the Chinese tourists aren't eating the coral or all of the fish that are there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's absolutely beautiful. It's like living in a screensaver. Oh, I, dude, you know? I saw that on the on the uh, event. It, it, when, it, when it came on, it like blew my mind. It was like you're looking at a postcard with a, a ring in front of it. 90 shades of green in the water. Are you with me? I mean, it's absolutely, it is like living in a postcard. So what you're saying is even though Thailand's ravaged, that, that it might have a small effect, but it sounds like it's not going to have much of an effect on Bare Knuckle Kingdom. No. I don't think it's going to have too much of a game. Uh, you know, I had to come back for some family business, I, which, you know, shit happens in the world, I, you know. Uh, but again, uh, I plan on going back there in September. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be there in Biloxi. I want to see Alan Belcher. Yeah. I very much want to see Alan. Oh, yeah. Oh, say hi to John. Not if you see him there. And John, yeah. you know, you say family business. That's not what I was told me. Or they said you flew here just for the BKFC show. That's exactly. what we're going to go with. Looking a little Co more important on our part. Correct a Mundo, <laughs> my friend. Correct them. I came here to talk to the Feldmans, to, to sort it out. Let's see what the year has to, to, to be. Agree. And again, 2022. That's the year looking looking fantastic. And it's not only just Southeast Asia. It's all of Asia. China, I'm coming at you. Ni hao. Shi shi, my friend. We, we, I want some more Chinese fighters. The Chinese, they didn't take. A lot of people think that just because they set up a, a, a UFC center in Shanghai that they're all MMA. They're not, man. I worked for Kunlun for years. They love the San Chow. They love the really? Wushu so much more. So kickboxing still their their bread and butter. The island of Phuket is like the melting pot of the world. You know, if, you, yeah. if Boston's the melting pot of, of uh, the U.S., uh, Phuket is like the melting pot of the world. And you just have all the stands, you know, all my friends from the stands, the uh, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, okay. Tajikistan. You have all those stands. You have all of the Chinese, the Japanese, the Taiwanese. You got all those bad boys Everybody. coming. And the Russians. Love uh -oh. me uh -oh. some Russians. Uh -oh. And I want to get those. And South America is also where uh, I personally would like to look to, too. I think the Mexicans and Central America, people coming out of Belize, didn't even know that they... I they honeymooned had, in Belize. It's beautiful there. Beautiful it's place, there, right? Yeah. They actually have some uh, some fisticuffers there. Yeah, well, I, I didn't see a lot of that. I saw another kind of banging. Am I allowed to say that? I yeah, you, I was yeah, yeah, my honeymoon. Banging. Uh, <laughs> so, hanging and banging so, over in Belize. So, listen. Belk and beer, right? <laughs> Delicious. We got to oh, get yeah, them on dude, as a sponsor. That's true. I remember that. Yeah. All right. So, listen, here's the other thing that people aren't looking at, or maybe they are, which I see happening in Bare Knuckle, at least in BKFC. And with what you're talking about, I feel like it's going to happen further. You're seeing, since it's such a, 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 a new sport, BKFC, yes. 
you're seeing different styles start to develop. It's interesting to watch. With uh, Bare Knuckle Kingdom, you're going to see another melting pot of styles. Yes. So this is all going to kind of come together nicely. In the next couple of years, you're going to see all these crazy styles maybe you've never seen. Different the ways Burmese, of fighting. The Burmese loved it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Myanmar as a country right now, once again, going through a military coup in uh -huh. a civil war. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, you know, it, it, it's very disappointing Like, because I don't want to feed off of the negativity, but... When I'm having talks over there right now, a lot of the guys are coming to me and they're like, yo, is Muay Thai dead? Is Muay Thai, you know, Lumpini Stadium just changed hands. Rajadam Nun Stadium is, is, is looking mm -hmm. at changing hands. Is, is Muay Thai dead? Like, what's going to happen? It's like, no. Actually, I think Muay Thai is going to be more alive than ever. Why? Because Muay Thai is a poor person's sport. And after this pandemic, oh, yeah. there's going to be a lot of economic destroyed people out there. And they're going to turn. And they're not going to have just... Op they're not just going to have the opportunity of fighting Muay Thai anymore. They're not just going to have Letway They're going to have to earn money. They're going to have to earn money. They're not going to have just Kun Khmer in Cambodia. They're also going to have the art of two knuckles. Yeah, and then they're going to yeah. look at that and they're going to bring their strategies with them. And it could be a, a little teeny tiny thing, but again, it melts into the bare knuckle style. And in five Correct. years from now, it could be a different ball game. So it's interesting to see how it develops. You can check out Bare Knuckle Kingdom, of course, on the Bare Knuckle television app, bkfc.com. Everything's on there for the price. It's amazing. Again, you're seeing some more here uh, from Bare Knuckle Kingdom. Gilberto, that guy's a absolute killer. He's from Brazil and I know he's spreading the gospel over down, down there. You know what I mean? Daniel Kerr, Kiwi, actually you know a new zealand new zealander and i know that he's he's part of that whole city boxing crew that he's trained with all those boys so they they were all there i mean when the island comes back remember that you have tiger muay thai you have puka top team you have aka thailand you're ready and then all of those have split up as well i mean this is like hot news for what's going on but you know Certain ones of these camps, I know that uh, Tiger Muay Thai is like, they're not going to accept anybody that's not vaccinated. Really? But there's a lot of people in this world that aren't getting vaccinated. Mm -hmm. right? So where are they going to go? So where are they going to go? So new camps so can new emerge. Camps, they're Which, popping up all the time. Powerhouse, it's full Aussie, like Aussie, 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 oi, oi, oi. Yeah. And they're, they're loving it. And so I think that, again, I just think that Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship has provided another outlet in the world of combat sports that, again, if you're a real true blue fighter... And you like to get that, you like to get those warrior marks. Yeah. We provide that. You know what I mean? And I, I think that a lot of the guys who are looking for something else, they're not going to look over to the, the, to the WWE anymore. They're not going to say like, oh, I got to go by storylines. Yeah. No, you don't. You don't have to go by storylines at all. You create your own storyline exactly. and how you fight, you know? And, and, and the way that social media has come up. You know what I mean? I, I don't know if you're a fan. I'm not too much of a fan. That's why you don't see me I on I can't the, believe you wouldn't be more of a fan on, on social media. We don't need to get into that, but yeah. I, I just feel like you would be tailor-made like a TikToker. Depression, brother. <laughs> I know, I know. Everybody says it to me, but I, I you know, I, I watched that social dilemma and it oh, bugged yeah. me out, man. That thing's a horror film. Forget about you know? it. I, yeah. yeah, I've heard about it. I have to I've watched that myself. I want to thank you for coming on today. John Nutt, oh, Bare Knuckle you, Kingdom, all the way from Thailand. By the way, how long have you lived in Thailand? 15 years, wow, 16 so years. You know it very well, but yeah. you're also very perceptive. Some of the views that you gave me today, I didn't even think of. Hopefully it made you think as well as, as a viewer, as a listener on the BKFC show on Spotify. John, it was a pleasure to have you no on doubt. here. I'm glad you hung out. And, uh, you know, other than that, man, thanks. I'll, we usually do this. You take yeah. that. We do a Tiger Life toast at the end of the show. Yeah. So Tiger open Life it up. toast, my friend. We love Choke Tiger D Life. means good luck in Thai. What is it? Choke D. Choke D? Choke and the letter D. That's oh, easy. Yeah. Choke D, everyone. Choke, Choke D, D, my friends. Choke D. Hey, don't forget, bkfc.com. Before we go, again, we're going to have another His great show next like week. His fingers are like penises. We're <laughs> we're glad His we're fingers are like penises. All right, let's get out of this. We're, we're glad, we're glad uh, that you came back. I'm going to say with my fingers like penises, knuckle up. <laughs> See you next week. Um